Welcome to the 99, where we are focused on brewing a better competitive commander. I'm your host, Patrick Marlant. And I'm Justin Rodriguez. And guess what? We got another set. <laughs> M20, baby! So guys, if you didn't know yet, M20 has been completely spoiled. We've been following along over on Mythic Spoilers. So if you see us turn our head this way, we're looking at that site. And we'll leave a link in the description we for actually, you all, too. We actually got more cards than I thought we would. It, yeah. They've been, they've been generous with Commander. They've been, a, yeah. Normally speaking, these are just like a glorified reprint set to get everyone up to snuff and maybe print out some value cards, whether it sure. be common or rare or mythic rare in some cases. Uh, but we have a lot of returning cycles that we're not gonna touch on here, but a lot of new additions to Magic that are really good, as Justin said, in a Commander. Color. And Super. some new Commanders, too. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, we're gonna talk about one in particular that it goes into a shell deck that I'm constructing, I'm very excited about. But before we get into the set review, I want you guys to know that you can follow us over on Discord, Twitter, Instagram, if you want to continue the conversation over mm -hmm. on those forums, you can do so by following the links down in the description. Of course, just below that is the comment section. Share your thoughts on everything that we discussed today. Oh yeah, berate us. Berate us with those <laughs> comments. We love it. We love answering comments, me in particular. But guys, we don't play every deck. I wish we did. I don't own every deck. And if we somehow neglect a card that fits perfectly into your deck, I try to stick with the decks we've actually discussed here on the show. That mm -hmm. way you have a frame of reference for what we're talking about um, instead of talking about decks we've never discussed. So uh, if we do miss a commander that a card would be perfect for or just a card in general that you think would be perfect Definitely for a commander, let us, know. let us know and continue the conversation in the comment section. Shall we begin with white? I think so. White got one card. White got one card. Which is amazing. Okay, so white is usually <sighs> like the bastard child of, of every set. Yeah. But we have one. I'm looking just, I'm triple checking now to see if we're wrong. I feel like Gauntlets of Light, is that a reprint? I don't know. Come don't on. Know. Anytime it says untap creature, there's usually some sort of combo there. Uh, not that you need, uh, maybe Boros Kikijiki. In the <laughs> Kikijiki shell, Gauntlets of Light. I don't know if that's sure. a reprint, but that's kind of cool. God's willing is. Okay, guys, I'm, you we're just going to get to it. Brought back. Brought back. So it's two white. So white, white, instant speed card and uh art's pretty solid choose up to two target permanent cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn return them to the battlefield tapped it's an instance it's double whites what decks would play this so namely if you guys followed along with the tashar primer tashar would really enjoy this mm -hmm. it's good protection for your combo pieces because we're going to be playing out a lot of our like our sack engines yep. and even if we need ramp to recast tashar we can bring back a fetch land there's so many utilities uh that this will allow us to utilize because it's any permanent yeah it's really really powerful there's very few cards in the history of magic that lets you bring back a permanent in such a way mm -hmm. um that's this cost effective mind you it's double white though you could bring back tashar with this you could just let it go to the grave if someone wants yeah. to interact with tashar or counter tashar it's an interesting card but how much white does your tashar list actually run really not that much what's crazy which is crazy yeah because uh i think we have 10 planes in the list and of course you You're can like consider your okay. you can consider your prismatic vista and your fetch lands uh, white sources too because they're going to get you those basic lands there's also that white deck when civi um which yeah. is like the rebels yeah i haven't played that but i know there's a couple of devoted fans for that i'd love to know if this is something you even something consider you and i'm actually building and i want to talk about this a little bit later when we touch on black but i'm building an orzov list for selenia the dark angel selenia is considered an angel um, brought it, back in that particular list might actually be really good. The only issue is, are we going to have that much white mana? What's funny is she actually has more white mana on deck on Tishar? average than Tishar, who's mono white. But uh, honestly, I think that is the only real CEDH worthy card from M20. Unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and unless you can note one for us that you think would be really great, um, the Cavalier does not deserve any mention. Uh, Great art. I like the art. I like the art too. I love faceless <sighs> elemental heroes. I mean, some, some folks were asking if this would be good in Tishar as well uh, because of its second ability. When uh, All the Cavaliers have an ETB and an LTB, but basically when Cavalier of Dawn enters the battlefield, you uh, create, you can destroy a permanent and create a golem. Its exit ability allows you to recover an artifact or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand. Not good for five. I think it's overcosted. You can't yeah. bring it back to Tishar. No. It's triple white. Trip white. You're yeah. playing that for bling. That's it. You're playing that for <laughs> bling, and it's going to be easy to get those foil. Anyway, guys, that is it for white. All right. The brain of my existence. On to blue. What did blue get? Blue always gets good toys. Yeah. Um, we Mu got Yen Ling. Uh, no. Mu Yen Ling. <laughs> Mu Yen Ling. No. That, I mean, it might be a good cube card. Um, 
What I'm interested in is Drawn from Dreams. It's yeah. too generic and too blue. And it's basically like a sorcery speed dig through time. Yeah. So dig through time. I know a lot of blue lists do run it. Um, Urza definitely runs it. Narumea still runs it. Hmm. It's a good card because it really lets you look through the top seven and just put two cards into your hand. But being sorcery speed really hurts this card. It a lot. You know? Yeah. And sometimes with Dig Through Time, at least in Naru, I'm casting that with like only two mana, three mana. Drawn from Dreams is something that's interesting. I just don't think it's that Do you think good. Naru would want to use this? For any of those mono blue commanders, Urza might want to use this? I think it's something to consider, and I'm going to keep my eye out on this card. I just don't think it's good enough. Yeah, I'd love to be proven wrong, though, because I do like the art. Not as good as its I like other the goldfish. Uh, koi counterpart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Not as good as our Mystic Remora over here, but there's two, so you get to play with two. Yes, next card we got. <laughs> Masterful replication yeah so this is five generic and one blue for instant speed we get that instant in there uh you choose one it's modal uh create two three three colorless golem artifact creature tokens that's, oh, what we're that's, going that, for. that's the best one that's one you want to use and then there's choose target artifact you control each other artifact you control becomes a copy of that artifact until end of turn i can't think of a deck that would abuse this just yet I know Urza loves a lot of artifacts. I think it's a card to keep watch on, though. Yeah. I think somehow, some way, this could be manipulated into something. I like it. It's a very powerful effect. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there is an artifact, uh, creature and or just artifact in general, that could potentially combo or loop well, off Ar itself. Well, Arkham Dagsum. I don't, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but that's strictly an artifact deck. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is even a something that would be considered with, yeah yeah well what's nice is it's only the one blue so it's not like it's difficult to squeeze out um to play this one and you could really get some serious ramp going if you your deck runs it no no i want to be lotus, i want to be even wanna... more degenerate with this yeah i want to yeah. copy something ridiculous yeah i haven't really looked into i'm not a huge blue enthusiast so i didn't look into what folks are doing with masterful replication however i am certainly curious it is one of the more interesting cards that come out from this set and this next one is really interesting because it almost feels commander centric uh this card is called tails end and it's funny because people don't mainline this particular type of counter mm -hmm. but it's that counter and then some uh, it's a uh, one generic one blue instant speed counter target activated ability triggered ability or a legendary spell. Think of mm -hmm. all the times decks win because of triggered abilities. Okay. Let's just think of Hulk, for instance. So. But but you don't really you know mainline stifle or any of those effects. But this lets you uh, counter a so legendary spell. If you were a deck that mainlines stifle, and Naru played around with stifle for a yeah. while, this feels like it'd be a better stifle because Certainly. it's it, there's right. extra things that you can do with it more so countering someone's commander and also countering all of these new war planeswalkers mm -hmm. um it also hits teferi which yeah. is pretty ideal um i don't know if it's good enough it seems very restricted in what it can do and blue typically wants to play the counter spells that are broad in nature yeah um like is this even a replacement for counter spell no, which is too. Blue, it's definitely right? not a replacement for counter spell. Because how many times is someone going to drop a legendary that wins the game on the spot? A lot of commanders. A lot, a lot of commanders, commanders do have that spot. potential. Like mm -hmm. I guess a Goto would be a pseudo threat if you know they have the threshold of mana. So no, no, I would probably rather stifle the Goto than yeah. counter the Goto. Yeah, I would just be point. like, okay, you can come in, but you do yeah. nothing. Yeah, use your treasonous ogre, go through, do the thing. It's fun. Where are you at now? I think <laughs> it's, 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 you know what? Blue is having a lot of cards this set that we want to keep watch on. You know, Tails End is legit. Though. Sideboard cards, I don't know. They might make it into a main list. I want to look at it. It doesn't replace Delay for me. It doesn't replace Counterspell, not yeah. by any means. But it's something to look at. I just, and I just looked at the flavor text. <laughs> Did you read this? <laughs> when you're gone, will anyone remember your story? By unknown. Unknown. Who do you think? Name that quoter. Who said that? Probably Teferi. Probably Teferi. <laughs> <laughs> Spectral Sailor. One blue. We're like really updating flying men here because we have a flash flying 1-1. One, one. But what we're really interested in is the three and one blue draw card. What? Okay. So it's like, it's uncommon. It's one body, one one, flash flying. That's really good. I feel like I want to want to draft that. That's draft chance. So Leovold would like this. Yuriko would like this. Narumeha. I don't know. Um, so yes. We, we you don't like... think so? I mean, you were using the buyback card. Um, okay. With Angel's Whisper? What is it? No, called? no. Whispers of the Muse. Whispers of so, the Muse. What we need to understand for a card <laughs> like this is what is its base value? Whispers of the Muse at the very 
least is still a cantrip. It's Enter one blue. One. Yeah. Draw a card. Spectral Sailor is just a 1-1 one, one flyer for one at its core. It doesn't mm. do anything. However, if you have Ghostly Flicker with Narameha, this is now an infinite mana post combo It also outlet. helps with stratagem if it's a targeting creature. It's a creature it body. It does, it does. Yeah. It, it's, you just cheat that out on my opponent's turn. I've got the body now. You know, mm -hmm. I've got the stratagem. That's interesting. I really do yeah. like this card. In an infinite world, obviously... Um, anything that says, you know, pay X, draw a card is going to be good. Fantastic. Uh, so mm -hmm. long as that mana, that infinite includes blue, uh, you're in a good spot with Spectral Sailor. It's really interesting that it's on a cheap body like this. What's also cool is if it's, uh, depending on the deck, mm -hmm. you know, it's Im immensely tutorable with effects from uh, Recruiter of the Guard, Imperial Recruiter. Like, uh, the 1-1 one, one is actually really, really beneficial. So Yuriko would definitely run this, and yeah. um, Leovold back in the day would run this too the flying men list but yeah. narameha this is something we need to consider do we need more outlets this is an outlet that only works post infinite yeah so but it's flash too so you can flash, flash in too, that yeah. body right when you need it too which is, i don't know yeah mm -hmm. i really like this card certainly one to look out for and it's uncommon so you're probably going to pull it um let us know if you're brewing with this guy it definitely stood out from the blue cards for mm -hmm. murder is common now it's crazy <laughs> there's gonna be so much murder yeah, <laughs> there's gonna be so much murder in this uh, in these drafts. Um, but anyways, we're we're talking about black. If you couldn't tell there, uh, we're just giving black a, a once over. We know the cards we like. We're just trying to see if there's anything else that's really of value. And one of the first cards that was spoiled uh, is an interesting one, and it deserves discussion. It's certainly no imperial seal. No. But scheming symmetry. It's one black sorcery speed. Choose two target players. It doesn't need to be you, but you're obviously going to want to choose yourself. It's always um, you. Each, <laughs> at least one of them. Each of them searches their library for a card, then shuffles their library and puts that card on top. There's no life loss here. You just tutor. But you're letting someone else tutor. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because uh, we love cheap tutors. We love efficient tutors. However, how do you leverage this in such a way that they don't get value? Circuit decks. Decks that have um, things like... Lantern of Insight, so we can put that crap on the bottom. Yeah. Uh, we also have what is the uh, the shredder? The shredder. The shredder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of the, I mean, if you run a lot of Grave Hate or milling effects in your list, this can obviously be played to some effect. I mean, I would scheming symmetry and then drop the Codex Shredder and be like, Whoop, let's see what you got. Um, yeah. Obviously, if you're gonna if you have those cards mm -hmm. in hand. Otherwise, scheming symmetry. It's it's interesting because you don't get to see that value first, which makes me believe that in a four person game you and one opponent, you're giving him the benefit of tutoring whatever it is he wants, mm -hmm. it actually puts all eyes on uh, him or her first. Unless you can trip into it. That's true. I mean, you could do this. You could set yourself up and can trip into it, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it does, uh, in essence, only by itself, puts a, the pressure on that player first. So, so what would you uh, grab if you were given a free tutor? Would you go chain. straight for your value engine? I would go straight for my value engine, but here's the thing. I wouldn't run this in I, just any list. This needs to be... A deck that's going to manipulate other players' decks. Mm -hmm. I feel like this is going to be one of this those. This is too cards. much value for somebody else. Yeah, this is one of those cards that's going to cause a lot of diplomacy at the table. Like mm -hmm. folks are going to be talking about how to hit who first. But I love it, and Sam McKinnon killing it again. Uh, the art's amazing. Get a little koi in there. It looks like a koi off to the side, doesn't it? Oh, to the right hand side. Sure. At any rate, scheming surgery. We like it. You should like it. Maybe try it. I'm not going to be using it. No. But I will be using this next card. This card is the newest commander. I'm going to say it. You're not going to play him in the command zone, but you're going to want to use him when you're 99. This is Villas Broker of Blood. He's five generic, trip black. Try ad nauseum into that. No. Eight damage. Enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. Eight. <laughs> oh, God. He's so awful. Um, so he's eight CMC for a legendary creature demon. Ooh, you, you might be able to do a little uh, thing where you summon him with those, uh, those little uh, clerics. The Apostles? No. <laughs> no I don't do that. Uh, so he's a flyer. You get the uh, activated ability to pay one black, pay two life. Ooh. Target creature gets minus one and minus one until end of turn. And it's final ability. It's a triggered ability. Whenever you lose life, draw that many cards. Damage causes loss of life, Sell obviously. Me on this. Uh, so it's an 8-8 eight, eight body as well, just so you know. Um, I am currently brewing a list for this particular legendary creature uh, with Selenia the Dark Angel. I mentioned it a second ago. That's Orzov. And Orzov has a, some interesting janky combos, but this guy will enable them. And to me, it's a very fair Grizzlebrand. I know that was the immediate likeness that was drawn, because he himself 
doesn't allow you to just pay life and draw the cards. So you actually mm-hmm. have to work for it or have mana prerequisite to do his ability and work for it. He can hit himself with minus one, minus one, but you're not really trying to do that. You're trying to get him on the field one of two ways. You're trying to reanimate him or you're trying to use Phyrexian Delver. Now, why those yeah, two? Yeah, reanimate. As soon as you target that card, it enters play. It's Period. on the field, yes. and then you lose the life, so you're going to draw eight. Exactly. Fantastic. It's sequential. It's sequential. Mm-hmm. So if you look at those cards like Reanimate or Phyrexian Delver, uh, when they are cast and or when Phyrexian Delver hits the battlefield, you can bring this guy back, period, and then you lose life equal to its converted mana cost. So mm-hmm. you're immediately seeing eight cards off of that. Life but then and you, death that, too. You can life and death that. So in Orzov, what we're going to do predominantly to draw cards, if you don't know who Selenia is, she has a pay life ability, pay two life to put her back into your hand. Well, you can just pay that as many times as you want and draw through your deck if she's out. Or you can Toxic Deluge. You can Toxic Deluge for 34 life. What do you do with all that life, though? Because you can't pay more than what you have. No, no, no. The thing is, you can pay as much as you have. So if mm-hmm. at this point I have 32 life mm-hmm. and I have him on the field, I'll just be conscious of what my opponents might have. But I'll pay for Deluge. And remember, it's an additional cost. So even if someone counters your Toxic Deluge, you still pay the life. Mm-hmm. So... Do that, trigger this ability, draw X amount of yeah. cards. So that list, we're going to do a whole uh, briefer on that list. Of course, I'm going to go through a deck tech to let you guys know how Selenia wins. But uh, and this Villas is... And is... this is a static ability, too. It's not even triggered. And whenever you lose life, I'm pretty sure that's triggered. Oh, yeah, you're right. You mm-hmm. guys can clear it up for us, but yeah. um, it at, when, whenever. Uh, yeah, no, it's triggered. Trigger. Mm-hmm. Regardless, uh, even if he was removed, that trigger still goes on the stack. Uh, at any rate, Villas Broker of Blood, he's certainly an excellent card to have in the 99. I wouldn't really consider him as your commander, because Mono Black is stunted more over any other deck. And Villas is just much better outside. I don't think he's like the next Hulk, but he's certainly a very effective, very fair way to go through your deck, because you are going to put yourself at a loss of life. I'm excited and to see this. I'm excited to play it. I'm I've excited been to be proven um, wrong. <laughs> you think you're you're proven me wrong. You don't like this card? I don't like this card. I love it. I love it. I think it takes a very um, dedicated deck to want to do this, yeah. and I think it's wasting resources to get to this, but if you can show me that this is viable. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, just so you guys know, a little teaser, Selenia has three win combos baked into the deck. You don't need to use Villas to get them. As a matter of fact, you just need to tutor up one or two sources. They're mm-hmm. all two to three card combos in Orzov. This just helps you fast track it, so you don't need to be concerned about entombing, reanimating this guy. You can sort of just win elsewise, but uh, he is sort of the core reanimator target for this list, and mm-hmm. I cannot wait to tell you guys about that list. He's just a very cool mono black legendary that I've been waiting for that's fun to brew for. Yeah. Fair enough. So Red got a lot of goodies in this set. We're not necessarily going to talk on all of them, but I do want to point out the three levels of Chandra. I like how they're doing this progressive storytelling with the uncommon rare and mythic rare. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's very, very cool that they're doing that. I think the rare is, by and large, the best, the Acolyte of Flame. I'll leave that on the screen so you can check her out now, but it's essentially giving uh, one of your instants or sorceries in your graveyard flashback for its negative two. It has Mm -hmm. to be three or less, though. So Wheel of Fortune, yada, yada, yada. There's some value there, and it could be good. I'm not necessarily using it in a list, and I don't think it's CDH level, but... This is not a headboardy? No. Chandra cool. Acolyte of Flame, I think it's definitely worth uh, noting and, and se- some definite consideration. However, there is a one generic two red card that came out in the set that I think is going to be really cool in the Heb. I'm 50-50 on this, and I think it's Minus really meant, it's meant, it's meant for this list. It's like, this is his partner from the wars, and he's not a zombie. He's just like, what happened to you? <laughs> you were so worthy! This is Glinthorn Buccaneer. One generic, two red, creature, minotaur, pirate... Haste? Oh, he gets to attack as soon as he hits the field. 2-4 body. Hmm. Now, it has the uh, static effect, or I say static, triggered ability of whenever you discard a card, Glinthorn Buccaneer deals 1 damage to each opponent. So if you like go-wide strategies, if you're going to be discarding a lot of cards, mm-hmm. say, with Neheb Dreadhorde Champion, you're going to do 1 damage for every card you discard. So already a lot of value there. Now, what if Neheb isn't out? He has his own looting ability. So for 1 generic, 1 red, you discard a card, and that's part of the activated cost, Mm -hmm. draw a card, okay? So activate this ability only if he's attacking. The good news is he can attack as soon as he hits the battlefield. So he's not just, you know, dead on arrival. He's actually quite usable when you place him down. How he'll slot into Neheb Dreadhorde Champion, I can't quite say. Whether he'll slot into other decks, I can't quite say. But with Neheb out and him, people abuse cards like Necro and Adnaz, and this is going to help 
level the playing field, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Again, we're averaging the head out on two and attacking on three. So if Glenhorn can be out prior to that and or during an, a run of attacks, sure. he, he's going to be really... You just need him out for Neheb to get the benefit of his ability. I'm wondering how relevant that uh, loss of life is going to be. Hopefully enough, because sometimes if someone whiffs with that Adnaz, they're left with like three or four health. If they're smart, they maybe kept like seven health up. Um, this, on a, you know, in a Neheb turn, mm-hmm. we're generally speaking discarding an average of like seven to 14 cards, even if we whiff. So think about, let's just take the average of that. Let's just say I did 10 damage to everyone mm-hmm. on an attack mm-hmm. turn. I failed, but I did 10 damage to everyone, not including the damage that they're receiving from this 2-4 body mm-hmm. or the 5-4 that's Neheb. It's really going to make it easier. So even if my Aggravated Assault gets exiled, and I've got nothing to get that back, mm-hmm. with this guy in the field, it's helping me go wide, spread some damage while I'm getting my value out of Neheb, and hopefully bring them closer to a range for me to be able to kill them. Because sometimes we'll even go off and only be able to kill two opponents. Sure. Imagine if this was That's the here. weakness of Neheb. Yeah. That's the weakness of Neheb. You can whip very easy. Very good one versus one. Versus one yeah, but we, we, it's, <laughs> it's killing three opponents. And killing that's, three opponents, that's, that's opponents. very difficult. You need yeah. more double strike. You do. We don't have enough double strike. No, you don't. But with enough, I think with him on the field, it will help your Neheb get those kills easier. Not even command damage people out. Just damage them out. Sure. You know, uh, let alone uh, the damage they're doing to themselves with all their fetches and, of course, the cards I've mentioned already. I think Linhorn Buccaneer deserves some consideration, and I'll definitely be testing it. I want to see what comes list. out for this. Yeah. I definitely want to see this There's play. a better card for Neheb in the set, but there is. this yeah. is one I definitely wanted to mention. Green got some good stuff! It did indeed. <laughs> so guys, do you like tutoring for creatures? How about two creatures? I know Savala does. Uh, for <laughs> Shared summons for three and Marvel two green. Instant. Instant. Yeah. Instant is what matters here. Yes. Search the library for up to two creature cards with different names, and put them into your hand. So... Until what are you doing with this? Um, so, uh, think of Tooth and Nail. Tooth mm-hmm. and Nail costs seven to do the same thing, but you can pay two more. So we're entwining for nine. You're entwining for nine to fetch and play mm-hmm. two creatures. And generally speaking, when you are able to make that magical thing happen yes. with Tooth and Nail, you're, you're probably post-infinite. What, you, what are you point. grabbing, though? What are you grabbing? So for this, usually? generally speaking, you're going to grab that Great Oak Guardian, because that's going to allow you to untap Savala and continue a sure. line of untaps, and hopefully bounce it with the Tamir Sabertooth that you that also put out. So okay. you're generally going to just grab combo pieces and or finishers, and Great Oak Guardian is the grand all, end all, be all finisher for the list, um, so long as you have your uh, Concordant Crossroads out, and you can attack on that same Does turn. this replace Tooth and Nail? I don't know, because Tooth and Nail is so iconic yeah. and so good, but this is also very good. Equally viable in the list, and I think that I'm going to sub these two out, mm-hmm. because I'll tell you what, Shared Summons, in a scenario where I have infinite mana, but I don't have uh, necessarily a win, maybe I'll use this to grab Genesis Hydra and Tamir Sabretooth and or Eternal uh, Witness or mm-hmm. the uh, Snake that does the same effect. Sidewinder. Thank you. Um, because that'll allow me to... Or Skullwinder. Skullwinder, Skull Sidewinder. Skull <laughs> That's a villain from a Marvel comic. Um, so you can do that, grab your Uit, and then use that to get back uh, any sort of effect from your graveyard if your... Uh, obviously your infinite mana outlets include Cloudstone Curio and Tamir Sabretooth, so you're able okay. to bounce you it and, and t- do that continuously. So you're grabbing combo pieces with this, but I would grab Genesis Hydra to grab your Staff of Domination, grab Genesis Hydra, grab your Concordant Crossroads. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot more effective in that in its cost. And again, you said instant speed. Yes. So we can do this at the end of someone else's turn into our turn, and we're in a good position. I think because of the reduced cost mm-hmm. and its excellent effect, um, it's going to have maybe a potential slot in Savala. Doesn't deserve a main spot. I don't know. Like, Weird Harvest is better. Weird Harvest is better, um, yes. And our other tutors at this point are better. Finale of Devastation is better. It's definitely a keep watch card. I'm going to own one, and I'm going to want to try it out in Savala. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you what it will sub out for. I was thinking Garuk is very good, but I was thinking Garuk, mm. or I was thinking Tooth and Nail. So I really like Garuk because you get to draw... Sometimes the draw is the value so is relevant in, yeah. in Savala to keep going. Yeah, it really is. Um, this is very situational. Again, in a post-infinite world, shared summons will help you get the game. It really, I mean, you grab any number of things. You just watch recruiter. Just grab mm-hmm. all the creatures, put them down. It's it's very good. 
Uh, but again, five mana is steep. It I is. think it might be better, though, than Tooth and Nail. We'll I have see. to see this. All right, lastly, for green... Not lastly. What are you talking about? That's not true. We got the best one last. We're going to save the best for last. But we have Wake Root Elemental. The only reason I want to bring this guy up, and a lot of people already mentioned it, but do you if like you haven't noticed it yet... <laughs> I do like the art. So, okay. Wake Root Elemental is four generic, two green, creature elemental. Ooh, you can fetch him with Flamekin Harbinger. And uh, it's got an ability, 5-5 five, five body, has the ability of making lands into 5-5 five, five creatures. But how do you do that, you ask? You pay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 forest, untap target land you control, okay. it becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature and has haste. So, sure. Guy's Cradle. Guy's Cradle. So, the prerequisite... Uh, four creatures on deck. Okay, including this guy? Including this guy and Guy's Cradle. You Untapped. can make Guy's Cradle a creature. Oh, oh. And you have five creatures. Okay. Tap it. No, you would need five creatures, six, because you need to be up one every time, right? Yeah. To get infinite mana. Basically, you can get infinite mana. No, you with, don't need to wait. be up one. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you can't keep untapping the Guy's, guy's Cradle. You need to tap the Guy's Cradle and then target a land you control to untap it. So it's untapped target land you control, period. And then it becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature. It's neither here nor there if it's already an elemental. So with 5 green, which you're netting from Guy's Cradle, if okay. you have 6 creatures on deck, you're always going to be up 1, tapping and untapping Guy's Cradle. So how, are you you untapping, how are you untapping your Cradle? Untap target land you control. But you can't keep make, you're just going to keep making it a 5-5? Five, five? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's oh, it. yeah. Okay. It becomes a 5-5 five, five elemental creature. So you just keep saying, Enjoy. I'm a 5-5, five, five, and you keep untapping your cradle, and yes. you keep netting one additional green. Yeah. Got it. So it's an interesting way to... It's very... There are better infinite mana strategies in green, is what I'm saying, and I'm sure outside of green, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you name it, there's going to be a better way to get infinite mana. Sure. But if you have a way to put this guy down, I mean, this... <laughs> I guess you'd maybe you try this. This is cool one. for casual. I don't know it's if it's cool going to break casual. into any CDDH, but I like that it's a combo with Guy's Cradle. Yeah. Which Two is very combo. hard to even obtain in the first place if yeah. you're not playing CDDH. Or if you're not proxying. But, yeah, it's a very go-wide strategy with this. I dig it. I mean, if if, if any... It, the thing is, you're, not that many people run at least land removal in our player base, so your Guy's Cradle is going to be relatively safe. Maybe Wake Root Elemental could be viable as a backup plan, mm -hmm. but it's a weird slot to take up in a list. At any rate, if you guys were planning to use Wake Root Elemental in this fashion, uh, let me know what list you're using it in. On to the best one. <laughs> On to the best one. I can't wait to get this in foil. Veil of Summer. Veil. One green Veil. instance. Veil. Instance. Draw a card. That's the most important thing, because we're cantripping with this. Yeah, well, draw a card if an opponent has cast a blue or a black spell this turn. They're going to. <laughs> Spells you control can't be countered this turn. You and permanence you control gain hexproof, hexproof from blue and from black until the end of the turn. This is going right into food chain, I think. This is very good. If you were already running Veil of Autumn... Yeah... Veil vale of Summer. Or, uh, what is it? Uh, Autumn's, Autumn's Veil. Vale. Autumn's Veil. Vale. Veil vale of Summer is, like, even better because it's a cantrip, too. Mm -hmm. I really like this because it's going to protect your cards on the stack from counter spells. It's only one green. Yeah. And I know for Food Chain, at least, green is our primary color. Green, then black. For your list, for sure. Then blue. Yeah. So, I like it. I don't know how it slots in, but I really like that it cantrips and protects your own stuff. Yeah. And it's only one green for all of this. It's interesting because it's certainly... I mean, for the second effect, spells you control can't be countered this turn. Yes. Uh, this is fantastic on a combo turn now. Just because your spell can't be countered doesn't mean you're necessarily going to win. They might have a different way of affecting your board state. So effects mm -hmm. like silence are still Bouncing. better. Bouncing. So this is great in Savala. I think this is excellent in Savala, and it certainly doesn't replace um, Autumn Veil, which is what a lot of folks were discussing. Yes. Uh, you want to run, run both. both. Yeah. I want to run both. I use Avoid Fate in my list just because... So Maybe not anymore. Usually priority number one. I'd like to run both. I think Blossoming Defense is still a better because it gives your creature hexproof and buffs it. Sure. Um, that's still better than Avoid Fate, but I'd like to run all of them because Savala is usually you have to have her out on the field for your games to be of effect. Sure. You don't win a game without Savala on deck. Veil of Summer is just another way to protect her, and I think it would be wise to run as many of these types of effects as possible. Any mm -hmm. veils we can get. Uh, Especially they... decks like Marwyn, too. Yeah, why? Because yeah, Marwyn is it's even more treacherous because uh, she needs to be the one that's powered, so it's there's the emphasis on her being alive is even higher. Mm -hmm. So Veil of Summer is going to go on any list that, you know, 
the creatures matter in some effect. Uh, Veil of Summer is worth it in so many different lists. Would Gitron run this too? I'd... It's a very good card because it can trips mm -hmm. and because it does exactly what we want. And for one mana, it's easy to slot into any list. I'm very surprised. I'm, that I'm this excited is, by uh, this card. Mm -hmm. I feel like with the amount of effects on it, it could have been one generic and one green, but they're very courteous to leave mm -hmm. it at one green. One green is really playable. CDDH. Super playable. I don't think I play this if it was one generic and one green. I would still consider it. I mean, folks run cards like Abeyance, and that's one generic and one white that can trips and disallows the effects of sorceries and instants, um, mana sources. It, sorceries and instances. Overall, fantastic card. Oh yeah, Veil of Summer, use it in your list if you don't already. So we're moving on to multicolor. What do we have here? Corpse Knight. Corpse Knight. <laughs> one white, one black, zombie knight, two, two. Not important, but what's important is whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. This is a slam dunk in Niv Food Chain because it is a two mana awesome outlet for Niv. Yeah. You play this, well, you play Niv, you grab this, you play this off the food chain, you keep playing Niv, everyone loses. Yeah. You drain them all. Yeah. This is very important because you can replace Sparkcaster, which is a CMC of four, yeah. which makes your ad nauseum even better. You're just really trimming down the list and cost. This is excellent for that. Yeah. And so it has an FNM right promo, I think. It has a game day promo. Oh, is there? Yeah, it looks so, excellent. This is if you didn't... I mean, a lot of folks jump ship to First Sliver already, yeah. but if you want to run Niv Mizzet, you know, if you have an affinity for him, whatever the case, uh, Corpse Knight is definitely an excellent inclusion. Mm -hmm. And it's just another uh, two-cost... What do they call them? Uh, one damage effectors like uh, your Blood Artist, your Zulaport Cutthroat. It's just another one of those. Obviously, uh, this is on creatures entering the battlefield, so it does change the dynamic a little bit. It's certainly good for that food chain list Justin was talking about. Mm -hmm. And... I want to say the FNM promo now. Oh, it's fantastic. So we actually got a couple of interesting cards uh, vying for a uh, commander slot. New commanders. And Love it. I would say there's three that are the most hopeful amongst them, and I want to discuss those first. This one I actually really want to brew for. I'm not sure how I want to conceptually handle the list. It's a strange card. Yeah, it's Kefis the Hidden Hand, and uber potential. Like, this is... So it's a... 3 CMC creature, 3 4 body, which is really good by itself. But it's 1 white, 1 black, 1 green for a legendary creature elf advisor. Legendary spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. So mm -hmm. legendary matters. And also there's a card from uh, the Kamigawa block that makes all your cards legendary. Really? Yeah, I forget what it's okay. called. If you guys remember, I think it's like a something gallery, something like that. Mirror gallery? To, not mirror gallery. No. I'll have to look it up. But Might that be. would be really good in effect with this. At any rate... Exile two legendary cards from your graveyard. Until end of turn, each legendary card in your graveyard gains, you may play this card from your graveyard. So whatever's there at the time this ability resolves, um, you basically Yawgmoth's will uh, your, your legendaries, legendaries. Okay. in the uh, command zone. You have this sort of effect in your command zone. Obviously, you can throw them down. You're probably going to throw them down early to get the most out of the uh, first static ability. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not sure how I want to brew for this yet. I would love to hear how you guys are brewing for this. You know, it's just a value engine. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily winning you the game by itself. However, people play cards like Kess because of her one-off value of letting you recast cards. This guy has the potential to enable multiple recasts depending on what you're dumping. So I would definitely consider a dredge strategy. Get as much stuff in your grave so as possible. So I wouldn't even say this is a food chain list. Obviously not. But if you played food chain in this and you can bring back your dorks and eat your dorks because well, all of your dorks are legend. Oh, no, no. You get, if you play well, the you artifact, got, you, you got everyone legendary. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's interesting. It's strange. it's strange. It's very strange because it really does matter that your cards be legendary. But again, you well, know... Well, Sissé loves legendaries. Yeah, Is yeah. this better than Sissé? I don't think I so. I mean, which one? The, oh, you mean not the newest one. No, the Weatherlight Champion. Yeah, I don't know. Definitely not. <laughs> I mean, again, I would I want to brew for this. I would love to hear how you guys are brewing for this. If you brewed a list for Kethis, feel free to unique. link it in the command zone. I want to see those strategies. And, of course, I, I'm thinking about going through color here. I would really like to play the Hidden Hand. And where is that hand hidden? We'll find out. My pocket. Yeah, we have uh, Kaikar Winds Fury. Do you think they call it Kaikar? Like, Kaka! I don't know. It must be a bird sound, though. Must be a bird sound. Yeah, but he's doing the Hadouken, so he was obviously trained under Ryu. I love that. Yeah. Did you see the arena um, animation for this? No. Yeah, it's like actually casting a Hadouken. What? It's, very, he... it's very cool. Oh, so good. Okay, so Kaikar the Winds Fury. He's a uh, one generic, one blue, one red, one white, legendary creature, bird wizard. I like that. 3-3 uh, three, three, body. Flying. Flyer, of course. 
wouldn't be much of a bird otherwise. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Should have been a bird. Yeah, flavor, <laughs> flavor mist, guys. White bird spirits. Make a new token for that, why don't you? Sacrifice a spirit, add red mana. All right. How do we abuse this? All the red cantrips in the world. You already know Shapers of Honor already made a list for this. Lurker made a list for Like, a lot of people did made they? a list for this. Yes, they did. Yeah, yes, they? this is easily one of the more... This is the most prospectively interesting legendary creature to come from this set because it's almost lending itself to be a storm list mm -hmm. without black, which is what makes it really interesting. But again, whenever you cast, you just have to cast the card. Yes. And you get yes. a body. This is good in so like many it. scenarios. Like, you mm -hmm. can get the spirit to be the chump blocker you needed, sack it to get a different effect. It's it's offering so much value on the fly. Goblin Bombardment? I mean, you could do a Goblin Bombardment no, no, if no, you no, have no. a way to yeah. make infinite spirits. Yeah, and then you just blow them all. Yeah, <laughs> and you just blow them all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's the thing, though. There's a lot of potential here. I haven't brewed for this guy. I, no. I know everyone's trying to make a list It's going in my cube. It's replacing Soulfire Grandmaster. Is it? Yeah, I really like this. this I is, like it, too. This some of the hard. best art. Some of the best art. I want that foil. Too. Yeah. G Most Lee? G Host Lee? I can't read this. It's too blurry. At any rate, <laughs> excellent art, excellent effects. Excited to see what people do with this. I just want to place my hand somewhere hidden. Anyways, I mean, no, that's the other guy. Yeah, no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That guy is showing both. He's, He's going to burn you with those yeah, hands. Yeah, there's no hiding this. <laughs> there's no hiding this, Adokin. The last one we want to talk about... Wait, wait, wait. You're going to miss, you're going to miss Omnath? Oh, you want to talk about Wow. Omnath? Wow. You're getting a lot of people hating on you for that. You think so? Omnath, Locus okay. of the Royal? Come on. Okay, Omnath, Locus of the Royal. One green, blue, red, 3-3, three, three, elemental... What's important with this guy is when he enters the battlefield, it deals damage to any target, any target, equal to the number of elementals you control. Okay. That's all I really want to know, because if we play this with Food Chain, and we infinitely loop this card, he is a damage outlet in the command zone. Very cool. Yeah. He does not have black. <laughs> exactly. Or white. No. But. But. It, it is... I like it. I think this is going to be a fair food chain list, and I'm excited to see anyone brew for Omnath. Do I think it's going to best the five color food chains? Likely not. Um, they have the benefit of having black, which gets you Yawgmoth's Will, mm -hmm. Ad Nauseam, Necro. But he wins on his own in the command zone. I love it. All you need is food yeah. chain. You don't need outlets. You just play him. What's interesting, though, is like you also lack all the tutors from black. It makes it very difficult sure. to say that this is an excellent food chain commander. I feel like this is going to be a fair food chain commander. Well, now you're running Red Gamble. <laughs> you're going to be running Gamble. Yeah, exactly. Do you really want to gamble your food chain? You're going to have to. Not just survival. I, I agree not? with you, though. I think that's I'm very sure. cool that it yeah. is its own outlet. And usually cards that have that effect have some amount of power being in your command zone. But... I don't know if it's going to be the best food chain, but I'd love to see folks brew for this guy if you have a list for Omnath. But also, if you control eight or more lands when he comes into play, you draw a card. So if you were able to somehow play a late food chain, late Omnath, you would also be drawing cards. Eight is a lot. <laughs> it's a lot to ask Eight for, is a but, lot. But I mean, like, it's, that's like Narameha territory. Play all the cards that cheat out lands, and then food chain this guy. To zap and draw your deck. Oh, you know what the issue with this is, though? What? Because if you do have the eight lands, you will mill yourself. That's not you, Meg. Oh. You just you just mill yourself. Oh, this is not my favorite commander. Well, I right. mean, yeah. This is what this guy looks like. <laughs> <laughs> you see his Yara compression? At any rate, guys, this is the last one I was going to talk about because it has a cool effect. <laughs> Yarrick the Desecrated. Two generic, one black, one green, one blue for a 5 CMC. Legendary creature, elemental horror. Ooh, Omnath gets the benefit off this guy too, huh? Desecrate this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to desecrate that. I'm going to desecrate that opponent. With the Death Touch lifelinking 3-5 body I receive. Now, most importantly, it has the triggered ability. If a permanent... Oh, not even triggered, I'm sorry. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. It's not a trigger ability, but it triggers triggers. Triggers triggers. <laughs> For the double trigger. So it's a panharmonicon on wheels. On, on wheels, <laughs> yes, on wheels. It's a panharmonicon on wheels. Yeah, you could say that, but it's for permanence. Permanence. It's got my favorite colors, though. Blue, black, and green. Yeah. 
I like that. Well, I certainly think those are Soul amongst time. the Soul strongest time. in Magic's history. Um, black for its tutor abilities, green for all its effective ramp, blue for all its counter magic. Your list is going to be strong. How your list utilizes Yarick is going to be interesting. I have not looked into any of the brews for this mm-hmm. guy, but I know folks were also excited about him when he was announced. He was one of the later um, Gold Border cards that was announced. Sure. I don't know who's using this. Panharmonicon's powerful. Does that get you excited to have it in your command zone? Mm. You tell me. <laughs> Moving on to artifacts, Tashar's favorite. Well, actually, the first card I want to talk about has nothing to do with Tashar. It's Neheb. Straight up Neheb. Bag of Holding. This is the card uh, I got most excited about. A lot of folks were pointing this card out to me as soon as it was spoiled. I gave it a once-over. Didn't think much of it. I looked at it again. How many cards in Magic's history really benefit you from being discarded? So, Mm -hmm. Bag of Holding is one generic, and it's an artifact, obviously. Whenever you discard a card, exile that card from your graveyard. Ooh, ooh, that that must hurt. Well, for two, generic, and a tap, draw a card, then discard a card. Ooh. You're exiling that card. Why would you do this to yourself? Still not excited. What are you Still not me? excited. But for four mana, tap this card. Sacrifice Bag of Holding. Return all cards exiled with Bag of Holding to their owner's hand. Okay. So now we're talking. Now we're talking. When Neheb attacks, you're discarding a lot of cards. If you're not using Library of Lang to put mm-hmm. those cards back on top for some amount of value... You're probably going to be using Bag of Holding. Now, why would you want to use this? Well, in a list that now contains Goblin Welder, Goblin Engineer, you're able to recover this card from your graveyard. More importantly, all those cards you're discarding on subsequent attacks, let's just yes. say we, we discard nine cards, and we've, we're have we floating nine mana, because the mana from Neheb, Dreadhorde Champion, continues to carry over from phase to phase. So we've got nine mana. We somehow didn't use any of the mana. We'll use four of the mana now have whatever remaining, and grab all the cards we discarded. Mm -hmm. If this is on the battlefield, it changes the dynamic of every single discard. Because you know what? Maybe I can wait to use that wheel. Because now you're thinking... I'll put it in my exile. Does it go into the bag, or does it go into the library? Or does it go into the trash? Never the trash. It just goes into the bag. Yeah. Well, if you have Library of Lang and this out. Yeah. But Bag of Holding by itself is going to allow you to get the hand size you need when you see Aggravated Assault, and then be able to go off on an attack so on and so forth, with your Aggravated Assault. If you don't know how that win works, I'll just encourage you to watch my, my primer on Neheb. But Bag of Holding is definitely an auto-include for Neheb. I like it's it. going to be an insane value engine for the list. It's just allowing you to get the most out of your turns. Because again, red is lacking in card draw. This isn't card draw, but it's going to allow you to fill up your hand by tapping this. So you could dump them all again. You can dump them all again. Not back into the bag, because the uh, bag's gone, but yeah. it's a whole nother dump. <laughs> Hold another dump. <laughs> also, again, you can goblin weld this back onto the battlefield yes. because most of our, you know, <clears throat> multiple combats come equipped with untap all your creatures. So you're going to be able to boop goblin welder that back onto the field and start that chain up again, depending on how many other, you know, relentless assault Definitely effects. Definitely an have. auto include in the head. I really like it in there. I love it. I think that deck just got even more powerful and hopefully a little bit more consistent. But the next thing we want to talk about Golos. The Tireless Pilgrim. You've never seen him tired. So, it's a five-color commander. Yes. It's five. Legendary Artifact Creature Scout, 3-5. But when he enters the battlefield, search a library for a land card. Any land. Any land. Guys, which, cradle. Which is what I like. But El- that, El- White Root Elemental. You're going to put it You're gonna put it into play <laughs> tapped. Yeah. Uh, and then for his main ability, you can exile the top three cards of your library and play them this turn without playing their cost. So this is yeah. an infinite mana outlet, which yeah. we like. But it's an infinite all-color mana outlet. So we're going to need all colors to make it's this work. It's mad potential, and you you might even want to... I think this list is going to utilize a few dorks, so maybe the land you grab mm-hmm. is Gaia's Cradle. Again, Gaia's Cradle is only netting you um, your forest. Yes. But the activated ability, the important part there is that it's too generic and Wooburg. So that's seven mana. Um, it's going to be a tricky card to really leverage. It's going to need a lot of help to take advantage of that activated ability, but in a world with infinite mana, and we have infinite ways to accomplish that with mm-hmm. five colors, you can play through your list. Is it going to be as effective as, say, your food chain list? Maybe not. People have mentioned it in the food chain server. I don't necessarily think this is a food chain deck. Um, mm. I know there's a whole another server for this card. I have not looked at it yet. I... 
don't really know where to go with this, but I think it's a very powerful effect and a very cool commander that could see potential play. Yeah. No, I love... I like the potential of this card. I like the fact that he's finding you lands. He's a scout. We don't have any scouts. Savala. Savala's a scout? Yeah. Oh, Elf Scout. She is a scout. Wow. All right, Golos is definitely worthy of mention. I think some... Folks are going to want to brew for this guy. If you oh, they're going to break it. Mm-hmm. I'd love to see it. Love to see it. Um, we've got a couple more cards in the artifact department we want to talk about. Um, Mystic which one... Forge. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't know how to assess this one. But... Me either, but it's four for an artifact. Um, you may look at the top card of your library at any time. We like mm-hmm. that. You may okay. cast the top card of your library if it's an artifact card. I like that. Or a colorless, colorless non-land card. And then for tapping it, paying one life, exile the top card of your library. I know Ernesto Ooh. said he was interested in for Jorah. List. Yeah, yeah, so 4 CMC is a lot. You know, there's a lot of things that slot into the 4 What's CMC the range. What's this? No. No, you don't think so? No, there's so I, many artifacts. Mind you, we have 36, not including lands. Okay. Land artifacts. So Mystic Forge is interesting because you are able to at any time see the top of your deck and mm-hmm. then also play it. The thing is, uh, exiling the top of your life. What I wish, what would make me consider this for Tishar, in case you, some folks had asked me, mm-hmm. if you were considering this in Tishar, let me just put it out there, exiling the top card of your library is not what you want to be doing. If it said pay one life and mill it, put it in my mm-hmm. graveyard, that would be amazing. Then this would be an auto-include. But unless its effect is as good in my list, and this might not be fair, as mm-hmm. Clark Clan Iron works, like, I'm not gonna be competing over playing four for that or four that. for this, because that can end the game. This can help leverage more effective turns this out of my like game. This is like a mini engine, and I know Ernesto's so excited for this because he can cheat out the cost, he plays yeah. so many artifacts. Yeah. Well, with Sensei's Divining Top, uh-huh. this will let you draw your deck if you have... How? If you have a cost reducer. So if you have Helm of Awakening out, Mystic Forge, Sensei Divining Top, draw your draw a card, put Sensei Top uh, on top, pays yes, zero yes. to play it again, draw a card. So there, yes, there is potential here. I do like that. Um, Helm of Awakening, and or any and cost reducer, the um, Joy has, Inspector. Yeah, and then there's mm-hmm. the other Ether dude who gets to reduce cost of artifacts. Yes, the blue guy. So it has potential. No, yeah, with Sensei Definitely Divining does. Top, like there's just another reason to be running that must include. I think Mystic Forge is great for that. Um, Tishar doesn't really do that. I mean, it, it's very cool. My list doesn't use Sensei's Divining Top anymore. If you use Sensei's Divining Top and plenty of cost reducers, there's I only two. Yeah. You don't think you'd run around that in Tishar? It's just not uh, good enough? No, 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 it's not that it's not good enough. It's just there are other effects I want to be casting. But Mystic Forge, again, very good. It has combos. Maybe you should play it. Manifold Key. Okay, so we have the Voltaia key. Now we have the Manifold key. Manifold key only costs one as well. Mm. But the main difference between this, there's two main differences. It can't untap itself. The key yeah. can. Yeah. But also, this one has three and a tap. Target creature can't be blocked this turn, which is useful for certain commanders that need to get in. Yeah, but, yeah, it's interesting because this... Even decks that don't leverage Voltaic Key in a combo mm-hmm. like it for its ability to ramp. Now, this allows you to ramp like you would any other list. Mm-hmm. And maybe if you're so your using... your Grim, your Basalt... Yeah, your Najila your might Mo. benefit yep. from this. Okay. Like, being able to just get in there and create the tokens okay. might benefit from this. Obviously, Neheb might benefit from this. Of course, 3 CMC is a lot for that activated ability. And of course, mm-hmm. you are tapping it to get the one creature to be unblockable for the rest of the turn it's very noteworthy though so it's a voltaic key with extras um, attached it just can untap itself how mm-hmm. often are you Goto would untapping use this. Goto would use it yeah you, why not yeah Goto would use that he would love this yes Goto would love this <laughs> <'Cause> he can <laughs> get in he yeah. can get in no matter what yeah but then there's plenty of combos as well that rely like your breath of fury combos rely that a creature be unblockable mm-hmm. uh, at least to get the chain going so you could do it with that. And Combat Celebrant, you're usually going to be copying, making copies of him. So it's interesting. It's, um, it's a definitely the, much watch card. Yeah, must yeah. watch. can't even speak today. But I, really <laughs> like, I really like the key. Yeah, we, we like the key. I like the art. It reminds me of Pokemon for some reason. You know how they do their art where it's just like a shimmery item floating? In, sure, in yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just reminds me of a Pokemon card. Nice, Ruby. Um, but Manifold Key. Own it! I think it was like one of the last cards spoiled, and you were very excited about this. I had to text you the image, and I said, hey, would you run this? And you said, yes, yes, I would. <laughs> yes, 
So I don't much know room for ruin. I don't know how I said it. Yeah, but yes, I would run this. Oh my gosh, the foils are so cheap right now too, because no one cares about this card. <laughs> Not in a commander sense, but if you play Tashar, guess what? We just got another Apostle in our ranks. So it's three CMC artifact. Three is the magic number, baby. Artifact, <laughs> creature, construct. You can tutor him with your Scrapyard Recombiner. <laughs> You're not going to be running Scrapyard Recombiner. I tried. It's not where we want It's not it. good enough? No, but you can, there's actually a couple of constructs in the list already. A Workshop Assistance Construct. Okay. Your, um, the dude with the ability to sacrifice creatures. Ravager. Arcbound? Arcbound Ravager is okay. a construct if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh, yeah, he is. He might be. He might be. I don't know. I bet you he is. Five dollars. Five dollars and a bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> Says he is. Ooh! No, he's a beast. No, he's a beast. Wait, wait, wait. What, no, what, what did he used one, to be? What did he used to be? The thermite navigator no, 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 is no, no. the construct. No, no, no. Go back. Go back to like his original art. No, it just it doesn't say anything for Arcbound Ravager. You're a liar. I'm not a liar. I own that one. Here, there you go. Nothing. That's the one I own. Arcbound Ravager. No, the other creature that sacrifices is not a construct. Irrelevant. Guess what? Salvager of Ruins. <laughs> you can sacrifice Salvager of Ruins. Colon. Choose target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there from the battlefield this turn. Return it to your hand. Target permanent. So if okay. you have this out early, what you can do is save any of your permanents. Amazing. Amazing. You remove my sack outlet? Fine. I'll put it back in my hand. I'll recast it if that's what I have to do. But on the turn I'm doing that, if I put Tashar out beforehand, mm -hmm. I get Salvager of Ruin back. Now the benefit of having this guy... Bonus pedal. Yes, Lotus, but anything. Here's the thing. Salvager of Ruin is a self-sacrificing apostle. And what does that mean for us? If you don't know what the apostles are, I would encourage you to watch my Tashar Primer. How religious are you? <sighs> that deck made me... That deck is my religion. Um, <laughs> so Tashar, essentially in that list, the apostles bring back cards from our graveyard and they're always going to be artifacts. And we're generally looking for those zero-cost artifacts to create combos in the list to either mill our opponents, damage mm -hmm. our opponents out, a multitude of things, draw through our deck, make infinite mana... This guy is one of the best because we don't need a sack outlet with him. He is his sack is, outlet. Yes, so is. you have Tashar. You can loop with You him. have your, let's just say, Lotus Petal in this instance. Mm -hmm. You sacrifice Lotus Petal. Yes. I'm going to sacrifice Salvager of Ruins to grab okay. Lotus Petal. I'm going to play Lotus Petal. He comes Tashar back triggered. to the field. I get Salvager of Ruins. And you just keep it being for infinite mana. That's it. Wow. That, no, that's that's really strong. Yeah, that's not bad. And then you have Conjurer's Bobble. I'm going to sacrifice Conjurer's Bobble. Sacrifice Salvager of Ruins. I'm going to draw a card. You're just going to go through your entire deck. There's a multitude of things you can do with this. It's only caveat is that it needs it needs to have been placed in the battle from the battlefield into your graveyard that turn. Okay. But again, it's literally any So many permanent. things can do that. So many yeah. things can do that, but especially just, in the Tachar list. Even if you just want value from it, like you can crack a fetch, uh, use Salvager of Ruin, get the fetch back, play the fetch again, ramp yourself. Like it's giving you value. Well, you can't play two lands. No, 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 no. But you can use yeah, its yeah. ability, crack the fetch, Put the oh, land into oh, play. Sure, sure, you know sure. what I mean? Okay. Like, that's not going to uh, count as your land per turn. Mm -hmm. But there's so many things you can do with this card um, outside of just its own combo phase with Tashar. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want to include this in your list. And of course, it's tutorable because it's a 2 1 body. It's a tutorable because it's Scrapyard Recombiner. If you play that, it's a construct. I told you Tashar would get something. <sighs> Thank Every... <laughs> goodness. So, if you're wondering, I'm likely going to replace the Restoration Specialist for Salvager of Really? Mm -hmm. I like that card. I like it too, and now it lets you retrieve an artifact or enchant artifact and or enchantment from your graveyard to your hand for mm -hmm. one white mana, and you sacrifice her. The only issue is that it only combos out with Lion's Eye Diamond and a few niche scenarios with other sack outlets, much like another Apostle would. Mm -hmm. But we already have the Salvage Scout in our list, which so is this one is so CMC. Broad. This Salvager is, does a lot. Salvager does so much for your list. You're gonna want to hard cast him. You're gonna want to get him back with Tashar. I mean, it was Tashar. It's amazing. Uh, I, I love this card. It's an auto including Tashar. So if you are looking for a new apostle or just a combo creature for your list, this is the one. Agreed. This is the one. Really, really excited about that card. Yeah. So guys, that is it for M20. Wow. So much more than I expected to be in this list was in this list. Really excited by it. Yeah. Um, I didn't expect us to get anything because we got so much off Over of Modern Spark, Horizons. Modern Horizons. It's, Great three last sets for Commander. Very excited for all of those. Legitimately, us. and I'm surprised that they're printing and reprinting uh, so much value. Of course, we had the Canopy Lands with the last set. Mm -hmm. um, if you care about your Scry Lands, we got Scry Lands with this set. Um, there's 
so much value in this set. I'm excited to just draft it and play it casually, but also hopefully acquire some of these new cards. Every one of my decks, there's at least two new cards for those lists. I'm very impressed with the amount of value that was printed in this set, um, and let alone reprints from this set. So if you need any of the ley lines, they should hopefully drop in yes, price. Yes, they know? definitely will. It's like there was so much here, and I'm so happy that they're continuing on this trend of producing uh, new and excellent cards. For all formats. For all formats. But um, all of this, Kaikar obviously is being the big, uh, you know, uh, triple, color, for that. triple mm -hmm. color commander to come out from this set. Yeah, and Villas. I'm very excited to share Villas with you guys. But if you enjoyed M20, what it has to offer, let us know what you're most excited about in the comment okay. section down below. If if Villas wins a brew war, I will buy you a bacon, egg, and cheese. You will? Yes. Oh, oh, you know I'm playing <laughs> Villas on our next brew war. So you guys know, I actually already bought the list. I The first the first day it was announced, the first 48 hours of, of its announcement, mm -hmm. my life was hell-bent on building a Villas deck. I built three lists, and I settled on two, and now I'm down to one. Okay. I, I like it that much. We're going to win a Brew Wars. Contention. I, I will run Naru Meha against, against Villas in that Brew War. Well. Okay. I will bring Naru back mm. just for that. Just to spite you. I almost want to proxy this, like the cheesiest proxy. Just to play Villas in our next Brew Wars, but I don't know. It's That's too much. I'm going to get all the cards soon. I'm actually just 10 cards, no, 7 cards shy from having the full list. Obviously, the set hasn't even released yet, so I'm just waiting on Phyllis. Sure. At any rate, guys, if you enjoyed this episode, join us on the Discord! <laughs> <laughs> Spank yourself. No, I was going to say something stupid, but that's even better, guys. Um, thank you for joining us. Again, my name is Patrick Marla. I'm Justin Rodriguez, and... Happy Bruin, babies! Oh, yeah. Happy Bruin. I, this was a good set. Really Surprisingly. Was. I didn't expect it to be this good, and I'm so glad there's just all this gas that was printed here. And again, you know, after Yawgmoth, I was not expecting another cube decent... You even got good cards, like Rotting Regisaur. I like that for the cube. Yeah. I like that for the cube. And you got your Scheming Symmetry. No, what's the other two black creature that makes everyone exile a card from their hand? Yarrick's Fen Lurker. Yarrick, he's all over the place. His Fen Lurker is even doing damage, dude. And there you go. There's a triggered ability for you. Exile two cards, sucker. Love it. Anyway. <laughs>